Welcome back to another Excel VBA tutorial along with some PowerPoint. So today we are going to be covering, uh, you know, I, I would say a relatively advanced topic. It's nothing crazy, crazy if you've been watching some of my earlier videos, but today we are going to be covering how to basically build a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, quote unquote, from scratch using Excel VBA. So a lot of previous videos, I've shown you how to take different objects, copy them from Excel, and then copy them over to PowerPoint. Well, that's all great and dandy, but a lot of times I get people asking about like, hey, how do I change the title of a slide? Or how do I position it? How do I put it on the right side? How do I make it linked, not linked? All sorts of different stuff. So while this is not going to show necessarily every possible thing you can do with every possible object in Excel, I at least want to present a framework where you could make this interactive for a user. So you could take something like you're seeing in front of you, which is a nice Excel table, making it where the user could fill out different pieces of information in the Excel table. And then from here, what they could do is then uh, export all the content from an Excel workbook using this. So this is something maybe if you wanted to put it into an add-in or maybe you wanted to have your own personal one where you could load from different workbooks, you could do each of that. So to give you a little bit of a highlight of what we're going to be creating um, right here, I have a nice little drop down that we're going to show you how to auto populate with all of the objects in the current workbook, along with the location of them, uh, in this case, the sheet name, and then the object types. So this is very important depending on uh, what type of object you're trying to export. Uh, we're going to keep it simple in this situation. We're going to make it just chart and list objects, but Technically speaking, you could expand it to other uh, objects as well. There's nothing technically stopping you from doing that. Um, additionally, you can specify the slide, the top width, left and height of that particular object on the slide, whether it is linked or not using a simple drop down and then the title of this particular slide. So again, I'm keeping it pretty simple in the sense of I'm going to assume that we always want a title slide. I'm also assuming that we're going to always want to create a new presentation when we run this. But technically speaking, you could uh, use it where if you wanted to, you can make it where it's a template or something like that. So with that being said, let's jump into VBA and start writing some code. So the first thing you want to do is go to the developer tab and then to the visual basic icon. OK, so I already have some code here. We're going to write it from scratch. The first uh, section of code that we're going to be writing is for the drop down. So if you could make sure to insert a new module and then let's give this module a name. Um, let's give it update object drop down. Again, I already have it there. So I'm going to create another one called update object drop down for the video that I'm currently recording. And then we can start writing the code. So what's the goal of the code? Well, the goal is to loop through each worksheet in the workbook that houses this code and use that information to uh, populate a dropdown with the different objects, the location of each object and the object type. So this will be helpful when we want to go and export the objects. So what we're going to first do is declare our object variables like we always do in pretty much everything. So we're going to create a new subroutine. We're going to call it update drop down column, just like that. And then from here, dim Excel book as a workbook object, dim Excel sheet as a worksheet object. These are hopefully at this point familiar objects. Um, we're going to also declare an Excel table variable. This is going to be a list object. This is a list object, a data table inside of Excel. And then from here, uh, I'm going to do dim Excel uh, table uh, table column. This is a specific column on our particular list object. And then I'm also going to do a chart object. We are going to be exporting chart objects. So I need to be able to reference a chart object object to make it more confusing. 
We're also gonna have a table object. This is important because we wanna export table objects as well. So we'll just create a separate reference uh, so we can easily uh, do that. Now, something that's important is we're gonna be storing each of these strings in an array. So we're gonna also have to create another uh, variable called dim object array. I'm gonna put my little uh, brackets to denote that it's a, an array. And then it's gonna be an array of strings. So I want a, an array of string uh, all together. And then additionally, I will be needing to populate this array. So I'm gonna have to define uh, integer data type where I can iterate or increment it and increase it as I need to add more elements to my array. So this is gonna help us add elements to this array right here. Okay, and then from here, let's grab the book. So we'll set the book. And then we'll say set Excel book equal to this workbook. I'm going to tell you right now, if you are planning to share this code with other people, this is probably not what you're gonna wanna do. You're probably gonna wanna do active workbook. Be a little bit careful with that because obviously we know that with active workbook, that is the workbook where it is currently active in Excel. So it's the one we have our cursor in. So if you share this with other people, I would not recommend this, but if you go active workbook, make sure that you can easily identify the workbook that the user wants to grab the objects from. So this, I'm making my life easier, but I'm also not being super flexible with myself. Okay, then from here, we're going to loop through each worksheet in the workbook. And from here, I'm gonna do for each, not fro, for each Excel sheet in Excel book. I'm gonna go to that worksheets collection. I'll do next and then start tabbing it. If we have charts, well, how do we know if we have charts? Well, if Excel sheet dot chart objects dot count is greater than zero, that means we have charts. I'm gonna do end if, and then from here, what do we need to do? Well, we're gonna loop through each chart object and we're basically just gonna grab its name. Now, technically speaking, there is a chart objects collection on at the workbook level. I haven't necessarily played around with that one. I'm never really sure if like we can grab the worksheet itself. I mean, I guess I could check when we go right here, but um, you could possibly use that as well. Uh, when I wrote this code a long time ago, um, I wasn't, I'm not gonna say I was as knowledgeable as I was with VBA back then, but I never really kind of explored that topic. So it might be possible. I'm not gonna necessarily rule it out. We're going to grab each chart name. So that means we're gonna have to loop through each chart object in the collection. So we're gonna say for each Excel chart object in Excel sheet dot chart objects. We're gonna loop through that connection. And then next. And then from here, I'm gonna tab in. I'm gonna update the count first, update the count. And we're gonna say, object array index equals object array index plus one. So we're gonna set it equal to one. We're gonna re do redim. So basically redesign, preserve the array though. And then we're gonna make sure that we uh, basically increase our array to match the size that we want it to be. So as we're looping through, we wanna increment it by one, we wanna increment it by one. You know, you maybe could even do it beforehand. You know, if you wanted to maybe make it a little bit faster, you could count this beforehand instead of doing it. But again, different ways. I could say probably a little bit faster if you did it the other way. But the nice thing is there's not too many charts and tables in here. So speed wise, you're not gonna really see much of a difference. Okay, and then once we do that, add the chart object to the array. And then from here, um, we're gonna take our object array. We're gonna say object array index, and then it's gonna equal the Excel chart object name, oh, sorry, object dot name. And then we're gonna do ampersand, double quote, uh, hyphen, double quote, ampersand, Excel sheet dot name, ampersand equal, sorry, double quote, 
hyphen, double quote, ampersand, and then uh, we need type name. So this is a built-in function. And then Excel chart object. So this is a nice, easy way to return that information for us. And then from here, you would just loop through each chart like so. I'm gonna make this where it's a little bit more concise. Okay, now let me check really quickly and see if there is a sheet property. Hmm, there's a parent, but I don't think the parent's gonna return the list objects collection, so you might. Hmm, yeah, I don't like that. I guess not. Hmm, interesting. So, I mean, you probably could do parent.parent. .parent. That would probably return the sheet name. Um, you wouldn't have IntelliSense, so that would be the only kind of downside about that. Um, but yeah, so that's basically adding in the chart objects. So we're gonna continue on with this, and we're basically gonna do the same thing, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check to see if there are list objects. So we don't have to loop through each worksheet again. We just need to add another if statement where we're gonna also check to see, hey, do you have tables? So if you have tables, then you can uh, do that as well. So basically we're just going through and we're changing some of the code. So this would now be the list objects. This would now be the table object. This would now be the list objects. Oh God, this would now be the list objects. I'm gonna do this. That can stay the same. That can stay the same. This needs to change to now a table object. That needs to stay the same. And then this also has to stay the same. And this has to change as well. Okay, so what that will do is it will grab all the table objects. So now we have the table objects, we have the chart objects, we have them populated in this array. How do we add that array to our little column, right? So how do we add it here as a nice little dropdown? Well, that's actually not too complicated. You'd be surprised. Um, what we all need to do is we basically just need to reference this particular range. So it's basically like I'm going here and I'm like clicking that little section so I have a selection for it. And then I'm gonna set the validation property for it. So the first thing I need to do is grab the sheet. I'm gonna make this where you can see it little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to set the Excel sheets equal to the Excel book. I'm going to go into that worksheets collection again. And then from here, I need to grab the export sheet. So this contains the table where I will be exporting stuff from. Now on that sheet, I have a table. So I'm going to grab the table from the sheet, set the Excel table equal to the Excel sheet. I'm gonna grab the list objects. And then in this one, I call it export to PowerPoint. That is the name of my table. And then I'm going to grab the object column from my table. Now tables are very well structured from a VBA perspective. So we can set the Excel table column object equal to the table object. There is a list columns collection, so that represents each column in that table. And then I just need to pass through the name of the column. Well, that's pretty simple because it's basically whatever you see right here. That's the name of the column, that's your header. So once you have that column, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the validation dropdown. And that's not too complicated either. I'm gonna take that table column I'm gonna go into the data body range because I really don't want the header in this situation. There is a validation property, which represents the data validation component of that range. And then from here, I just need to start setting that particular validation property. Now, I need to assume that there might be one there right now. So I'm gonna delete the old one first. I don't want the old one anymore. I want it gone. Delete that sucker. And then I'm gonna add the new data. So now I'm going to add the new data to the dropdown. Now from here, I'm gonna do the add method, and then I'm gonna start putting in my stuff. So I have a type, and in this situation, my data validation is an Excel validate list. It's a dropdown list. 
Uh, in this situation, do I have an alert style? Not really, but I'll just put it in here so people can see it. And then from here, uh, did I misspell it correctly? It would be Excel uh, valid alert, valid alert stop. Uh, operator, I don't even know why you need that one to be honest. Uh, Excel between, that's fine. And then from here, we have a formula. So what is the formula? This is the important part. <laughs> so we're gonna use the join function, the built-in join function. You can pass through an array. Well, I just wanna pass through my object array of strings, and then I want to join them by a comma. So normally when we create a drop-down list, we have to put in each value separated by a comma. So all this is gonna do is it's gonna concatenate or it's basically gonna join each element in that particular object array and it's gonna join them using a comma character. And then once you do that, you'll be good to go. And then <clears throat> um, there was this other property that was there when I recorded it. Personally, I've had it turned off and I didn't have any issues with it. So uh, I don't think you really need this portion, but I just put it in there because it seems like it would go with it in cell dropdown equals trip. Okay, so let's take a look and see what happens. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the old one. I'm going to say any value, press okay. And then uh, let's see what happens. Let me first make sure C. Okay. It's probably because I. Oh, a rare. <laughs> Debug. Oh, Formula One. My apologies. See, this is why we have this little thing. Okay, let's try it again. Type mismatch, that always makes sense. Excel table, object, Excel sheet, Excel sheet, table object. Oh, I did it again. Why did I keep doing that? This is a list object, my apologies about that. I keep doing that with, I did that yesterday when I was writing the code. I don't know why I did that. Okay, so it looks like it worked successfully that time. And now you can see we have a dropdown that has each object name, the object location, so the sheet name, and then the object type. And with that, that concludes the first video. So in our second video, we're now going to move on to the next component, which is building the script that will export all of our data from Excel to PowerPoint. However, if you have questions regarding this particular video, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you in video number two.